heard you talking softly. The TV and the radio. Still, I can't escape the ghost of you. What has happened to it all? Crazy summit said. Where is the life that I recognize? This is that Eric Alper show on Canada Talks. When I went to see Duran Duran as a teenager at Maple Leaf Gardens with my awful orange dyed hair, I would have never, ever, ever thought that an opera version of Ordinary World would ever be coming out on the same time as I was on this planet. But that is just a sampling of Viva Trio's brand new debut release called Nothing Else Matters that came out in October and it unleashed the trio's take on Sia's The Space Between, John Lennon's Imagine, Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, and Get Ready for Metallica's Nothing Else Matters. The group consists of soprano Anna Bateman, mezzo-soprano Aaron Fisher, and soprano and songwriter Katya Chubar. Chubar? Did I say that? Chubar? Chubar. Chubar. See, Duran Duran, I can get away with. <laughs> Simon, if you were Simon Le Bon and John Taylor, see, I would have no problem saying that. Um, they masterly uh, maneuvered these timeless, iconic songs and then some into thrillingly accessible operatic cinema and modern, intriguing gems. My gosh, what have you done? <laughs> I'm so happy to have Katya and Aaron here in the studio. Hi. Hi. This Hi. is... This was such a, a cool album to listen to because we, for the most part, we all know these songs. I mean, maybe, you know, if you are a fan of Metallica, you may not be listening to Ordinary World a lot. Um, but where? Where did all of this come from? Why these songs? How do you even begin to form a trio like this and say, let's do something a little bit different? Well, that started a few years ago. Uh, when we've been, you know, singing opera for quite a while, all separately trained or together, uh, separately, yeah. we're all trained opera singers. Did other things, you know, yeah. performed all over the world, uh, had other groups, uh, you know, uh, and singing at regular, the point, what we know, usual run-of-the-mill opera, yeah, numbers. operatic classical repertoire. Right. You you could say that. Um, my journey, in particular, uh, Kate is talking, uh, started <laughs> <laughs> started. Um, uh, six years ago, yeah. when I put together um, an opera pop group, uh, we called it Naria, and Anna Bateman was a part of it. Okay. Um, and what, did, what uh, kind of stuff were you doing then? Well, then, mostly originals. Yeah. But um, it was a kind of a creative process of blending pure opera with actually more pop, what you call pop. Right. Uh, so we had the songs of The Witch, you still can check it out, um, Ambitious, and it was, you know, regular, you, you know, dirty kind of mixed beat. Yeah. And then the opera would come in as, uh, as to combine two worlds in one, you know, like right. a dream world and reality. Um, and it, it, the group did quite well, but uh, I think um, it was just a natural progress of development and growth yeah. uh, that we, Anna and I, decided to actually follow more our roots and um, in terms of the, combine more what we brought into like a recording uh, albums and the live stage together, which was more performing classical repertoire. Yeah. But we didn't stop there. Um, and then when Erin came on board and it became a trio. How did you two meet? Well, we actually were looking for new people. Yeah. So Erin um, was officially auditioned and uh, we know when we met And I, what did you sing? What do you sing at, at an audition <laughs> okay, like Aaron. that? Well, it's interesting. Um, I, uh, I got a call from LA and I was in the process of actually practicing at the time and I never answer the phone when I'm practicing, usually. <laughs> and I went over to the phone. I was like sitting there. I'm like, mm, should I get that? And I and I went over and I, I got it. And I was like, oh, it's a weird number. Uh, it's probably a telemarketer. And I pick up the phone. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to politely like get out of this. Yeah. And, um, and, and the guy's like, 
hi, you don't know me, but I'm Steven. And I'm like, okay. Anyway, and then he goes on to say, and we're looking for you. We're looking for, we actually wanted to talk to you to audition for this new group. And I was like, oh, okay, this is taking another direction. And yeah. uh, anyway, so yeah, I met Katya the next day and I sang, um, I think I sang like very classical crossover standards. I sang and Nella Fantasia, Nella Fantasia yeah. and I, I probably sang something a else, little bit of like the, the prayer. prayer. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Anyway, but I have a pretty extensive opera background as well, so I wasn't worried about the opera part. Yeah. Uh, more interested in the crossover part, and it was an instant fit. And so. did, were you growing up listening to pop music, or are yes. you just really narrow in your scope in terms of I only listen to classical yeah, and so, opera? So Aaron here. Um, no, for me, I only listened to pop, and I my parents actually took me to a lot of musical theater, and when I got older, I was into jazz, so I actually knew nothing about opera yeah. until I went to school. I went to UBC for voice, and they said, oh, are you auditioning for the opera group and I'm or the opera program? And I said, I was like, uh, no, voice. And then eventually I got, went into opera and, and that was sort of my sort of trajectory for the next seven years. Do you know that you're good at that time? Like when you're at, at UBC, this is Eric here, by the yeah. way. Um, do, you, do you know that you can sing better than 99% of the people out there? Well, my teacher was really excited about my voice. And yeah. so that gave me a lot of confidence. And yeah. I kind of knew, okay, this is something I could really do. She's like, you know, we want to see you in New York. Like she was like, this is going to happen. Yeah. And so. And what are you thinking when all of this is going through? Here? Are you thinking I'm going to be a huge star? Well, no, I was just thinking, okay, I wanted my whole life. All I wanted to do was sing. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, okay, uh, I'm not sure how that's going to happen. I always had this vision of myself on stage with a microphone yeah. since when I was very, very little. And so I was like, okay, this seems to be the place where my talent lies. So I just followed that. Yeah. So, um, and, and I did the big opera auditions. I did the Met audition with to some success. And then I did... I, I auditioned for the Canadian Opera Company, which is what brought me out here to Toronto. So I, I got a gig with them, and that's that's actually eventually how I stayed here, and then and then met these gals. Yeah. And when do you start to really seriously come up with the idea of the album "Nothing Else Matters"? When do you decide we need to put this on record rather than just performing as a trio? Because you could have done that. You could have just done a whole bunch of shows and entertained people. Well, yes and no. Yeah. We could have, yeah. but then, with, which means we're, far where be it would for me to tell you what to do with your career. Don't, yeah. don't get no, me exactly. wrong. You know, <laughs> just like, like you we could have, we could have just take like, and the first songs that we released, like uh, "Quando Men Vo," what we did, we just arranged it for three sopranos, and then what we did, "Sempre Libera," we just again arranged it for three sopranos. However, we knew we have to go beyond that. Yeah. We have to uh, actually bring a little bit of our, our own uh, yeah. take on to classical repertoire. And that all just was about to choose the right songs right. to create that. Uh, and then the cinematic style came kind of like organic mm -hmm. into, into the mix. And totally. when we heard a few pieces, just, you know, basically movie themes, you know, from uh, Hans Zimmer and stuff like that, yeah. we realized, well, that can be our uh, the ticket to a new sound right. and that's how it all created but as you're saying how are you going to perform the pieces with the vision you have if you don't have orchestra arrangements yeah so that's it's impossible and i'm pretty sure there are more groups than ours just came up with this idea however this is such an undertaking to yes. put it together yeah, to imagine. fan arrangers to get the ideas of the songs to give the arranger feeling what you want yeah. and how you feel so what we would do we would uh, record uh, ourselves just singing in harmony and just show okay we want this verse to be like that and we want chorus to go there and if you can just maybe can you communicate well with those people absolutely yeah. it's, it's so it's not just like i want no. this more oh, orange you know yeah. nowadays it's so easy with yeah. the internet right like yeah. that's i think that another thing that's why this album i, I love is possible how you say today. that it's so easy it's just like <laughs> it's just, you oh, just extremely easy i don't have to take off, like, i don't have to buy a ticket and travel to ukraine to co you know communicate <laughs> with dmitry kanavalov or to you know yeah. to, to macedonia Rosa, yeah. or yeah, to macedonia exactly. symphony orchestra yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. this is all done by skype so wow. this isn't 
incredible. Look okay, what so you can do. I, I, I want to play something. Um, I want to play uh, wonder, uh, What a Wonderful World. This is the Lu Louis Armstrong cover, which is funny because you can go Louis Armstrong or Louis Armstrong. And this is, we're, we're just going to just take a quick listen to this. When you come up with the idea of covering a song like this, how? How do you even, how do you listen to this song and think, I, or do you, do you, do you immediately know I can't wait to do a song like this and this is how it, it is in my head? Different, Would you go through like trial and ways, error? Absolutely different ways. Each song has kind of a different story. Yes. Yeah. But for Wonderful World, uh, because I'm also solo, we've all been a solo artist and I also love pop music yeah. when it came from Ukraine like I just sang along and this one the song that I actually sang along a cappella first and was like wow that's actually can sound very good. Do you ever do so, it in his voice like you know, like, oh, no, no, you know? No, no. like when you're in the shower or just like walking no, along no, the street right away, no. or are you are you really just like oh, like yes right, right away really? in my yes right away in my voice and then you kind of hear it's you know like when you hear the music in your head I was like oh that that can actually sound beautiful, and you add the harmonies, like, and you get the feeling that it's it's a song. Probably when you I would listen like to, to the perform. radio, does it? Are you always constantly in a battle with your brain on how well you can make that song in an opera style? Is mm -hmm. it always on? Like, if I if you were just to listen to, you know, somebody like an Ariana Grande or Justin <laughs> Bieber, do you right. do you listen to it and and think that's nice? But I can really figure this out. You know what? It's, it's kind of like looking at a Rubik's yeah, Cube and you can say, yeah, oh, I can do that in like seven it's seconds. It's in the back of your mind. I, I exactly know what you're talking about. But I think it's a, a process of trial and error. We did try a lot of our beat songs. Yes. Yeah. And we know what works and what doesn't. Because when we perform and transform the song into more operatic cinematic take, we don't want it to be just a joke. Right, like we right. want, we want to touch right, people. Right, because it's we one thing to, to, to be, be a parody of we opera, don't want, of an exactly. opera singer no. doing that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So we know how far we can take it, and if we take it too far, it sounds like a parody. Then you yeah. know, yeah. we we do joke around. Yeah, we, like, we, we do right, have right. the parody exactly. parts yeah, of our yeah. concerts, but yeah. Yeah. we didn't want that in the album. No. Obviously. <laughs> Not in the album. <laughs> okay, so the uh, I, I want to play um, Chris Isaac, uh, "Wicked Game," because I I love this song. And um, I've only heard one other cover, and it was by Men Without Hats of all bands who did a, a kind of EDM version of this song. So this is the Viva Trio doing mm -hmm. Chris Isaac's um, Wicked Game. I'd meet somebody like you. I never dreamed that I'd lose somebody like you. I have my own personal story with that song that I'm not going to get into because I'll cry over my my grade eight girlfriend that dumped me at the time. Aww. But uh, <laughs> see, um, but do you do you have personal relationships with each of these songs? Of course. Like Absolutely. why? Like why that one? <sighs> That's a really interesting question. I think we were all really drawn to that song. For whatever yeah. reason, it was one of the first songs we actually covered in and chose in the group. Um, I think the really expansive chorus lines are something we always listen for. Yeah. Uh, we really like long lines. Our voices really lend themselves to those beautiful legato lines. Yeah. So that's something that we listen to and 
And we all loved this song. It's such a classic. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we connected with Mark Camilleri, who arranged this piece. And he's phenomenal. And he came up with this incredible arrangement. And we all really connected to that. And we also worked with him on another piece. But this song uh, stood out right away. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah. You know, you have your list of the songs you listened to 10 years ago, 20 years ago, yeah. you know what to say. And then when you say, okay, I'm doing an album, you start digging into that memory lane. Okay, yeah. what what was the song that really touched me? What was the song on my, like, playlist, you know, like, uh, all day long? And, uh, and uh, you know, this one was one of those. Um, Did, do you practice a lot together singing? Like, yes. even before, like, not so much of, of the live show, but when you're coming up with this album for, for Nothing Else Matters, I could imagine that unlike if you had instruments or guitars, you're kind of limited sometimes by the structure of the melody or, or how good your drummer is or things like that, mm -hmm. where you've got a pop structure that you have to work within. My attitude with opera is that you can go anywhere with mm -hmm. it. Um, how tough is it just to be able to say we've got it like when do you know that you have it oh that's a really interesting question because especially with wicked game it went through multiple iterations <laughs> yeah. of yes. versions we went through so many because you have versions. to know each other's voices really what, well yes. right. Right. and it took time to do that too. yes yeah. and because yeah. it was one of the first tracks we were sort of learning how we gel together as a group and you know what our strengths are and what sounds great when we do you know for example we had uh the whole song translated into italian and we, it was sort of like okay where do we throw in the italian what do we want to you know what do we want to bring out in terms of the operatic aspects of our singing yeah so you'll hear after i think it's after the second chorus that we do sort of a more operatic um uh vocalese almost yeah but it did what you're absolutely right. It took a while, not just this song, just when we got together to sing enough repertoire that we know, okay, Erin really sounds fantastic and this, she does this very well. She, everything else she, we all can do, yeah. but where do we really shine? Mm -hmm. yeah. And when we know those things and then when the song comes along, when we sit down at the piano, I was like, okay, why don't you take this chorus and then you go there and then we'll join with the harmony. And, and, but we always like to feature each individual voice as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why when you listen to our music, you kind of, by, by the end of the album, it's like, okay, that was Katya, that was Aaron, that was Anna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. The brand new album is called Nothing Else Matters. You can go to vivatrio.com for all the tour dates and details on the record. Um, Aaron and Katja, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank, thank you. you. It's been a pleasure. Coming up next, Alex Pangman is known as Canada's Sweetheart of Swing, and she's got a brand new record that she recorded directly to 78. It expands our horizon starting now. It's that Eric Alper show, Channel 167, Canada Talks. <laughs>